What's going on, y'all? Marvel Cross 316, back with another comic book flashback. Today, we are looking at The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 66. This issue came out in November of 1968, and we look on the cover today, we have Mysterio. Yes, that's right, the return of Mysterio. Spider-Man's going up against this famous, classic villain today. We haven't seen Mysterio since Amazing Spider-Man annual number 4, and so now we're going to look at how Mysterio makes his comeback here. And so we have a really good story for y'all today. I hope you tune in. Don't click away because we're about to look at an awesome story. So let's go ahead and get started. As always, this is brought to you by Stan The Man Lee, who wrote this issue, as well as John Ringading Ramita. We also have Dazzling Don Heck, Slick Mick DeMeo, and the adorable... Artie, Samek, all contributing to this wonderful issue that we're going to be looking at today. And so, as I said before, we are looking at the return of Mysterio. And so, you may be asking, how in the world is Mysterio back? Wasn't he put in prison after his, you know, battle with Spider-Man and the Human Torch and Amazing Spider-Man Annual 4? Well, we're going to find all this out right here in this issue and so, as we continue to look through these pages here, we see that Mysterio has set up this tabletop typical amusement park here. This tabletop amusement park, he's going to use it to his advantage here. And how does he use it? Well, we're going to have to figure all this out as we continue the story. But as we look here, Mysterio has been planning for months now on how he can finally defeat his arch enemy, Spider-Man. And so that's what we're going to be looking at here. He also reveals how he had um, pretty much made some improvements to his helmet here so that he cannot be seen through the helmet. He uses a lot of psychedelic powers here. Um, as we know, this is Quentin Beck. He is known for um, the, a master of illusion. And so... He definitely knows what he's going to be doing with Spider-Man here. And so we just have a lot of good things. We also see this gun here. That will play into a lot here in the end of this story here. And so as we see, we have Mysterio revealing here that when he was defeated, he also was defeated with the wizard here. The wizard was the other villain that he teamed up with in Amazing Spider-Man Annual 4. And so... Now we see how Mysterio got out of prison here. So we see that Quentin Beck, he was assigned to the pharmacy, the prison pharmacy. And while he was in the prison pharmacy, he was slowly and carefully accumulating chemicals that he needed that would help him to break out of prison. And so one day... He um, pulls out all of these chemicals and it starts to just smoke up the entire prison cell and all of a sudden Quentin Beck is gone just like that. And so again, like I said, he is a master at escape. He's a master of illusions here. And so now that Quentin Beck has escaped prison, all this time he has been carefully um, planning, I mean for months now, this plan that he's going to use and he he's basically saying that it's foolproof as well so we'll see how that goes here we know that he has been defeated by spider-man in the past but we see that mysterio is very confident in this issue so now let's return to our favorite webhead here um, we recall how he had fought the vulture um, two issues ago and so now He's going to return back to that the top of the Daily Bugle building where all that, fight, that that big fight took place. And he retrieves his clothes. Luckily, his clothes weren't damaged too bad. Also, the main thing to worry about was his camera. And, of course, his camera looks good to be, um, looks really good in here. It doesn't look like it was damaged at all. It was good to go here. So we see that Spider-Man is going to swing off now. His main worries now is to see if he can talk with Aunt May, come up with an excuse, um, as we saw how he had called her last issue when he was um, fighting in that jailbreak that we saw, that huge jailbreak in last issue. So we see Peter Parker, though, he's going to return home to his apartment. He has a lot of things he's going to have to worry about. 
First, he has to worry about Aunt May. Then he also has to worry about Harry Osborn worrying about his dad and his dad, Norman Osborn, becoming the Green Goblin. Then we also have to worry about Gwen Stacy as well. And as he knows that they haven't met up yet, they haven't um, reconciled on what happened way back in issue 60. And But we know now that Gwen Stacy is searching for Peter Parker and that she wants to reconcile with him. And so we see that Peter Parker gets up. He's like, you know what, I just can't sleep. So he sees that his bruises are healing from the fight with the vulture. He puts on his shirt and he notices that the shirt that he puts on was the shirt that he had worn um, when he was on top of the building taking photos of the vultures. And so we see that there's a big hole in that. But he doesn't have to worry about it as Aunt May doesn't do his laundry anymore. So we see Peter Parker here. He's going to go to the Daily Bugle to try to come up with an excuse to J. Jonah Jameson, but Jameson does not want to hear it, and he basically tells Peter Parker that he's fired. And so Peter Parker got fired on the job, and he's through. And so we see Jameson here. He tells Ned Leeds to bring him the photos of the vulture that his um, handyman had taken during that fight, but we come to see that these photos were not good. And so now we see the embarrassment with J. Jonah Jameson and Ned Leeds. is like, do you want me to go get Peter Parker for you? And so we'll see if Peter Parker returns to the, to the Daily Bugle to work again there. But we see that Peter Parker ha is falling on hard times here. And so he has to sell his bike just to get some money. I mean, he loves this bike. As we recall, he bought this bike way back in, I believe, issue 41 when he was fighting the Rhino. And so now he has to sell this beautiful bike. And all of a sudden, as he's collecting his cash, we see none other than Mysterio pop up in the middle of the street here. And he's trying to capture the attention of Spider-Man here. And he shows Peter Parker away. And so everybody's starting to panic here. But all of a sudden, within just a few seconds... Mysterio is gone. And so Peter Parker here, he's like, you know what, I could change to Spider-Man here. I'll let, let the police tackle him. I, I'm i sick of being a fall guy. But then he's like, oh, what am I kidding? I, I mean, I got, a, I got a job to do. I can't forget my oath. And so we see here that Mysterio was underneath this um, metal grating here where the sewers are at. And so he's like, man, I could have sworn that Spider-Man was going to show up to the scene, but I can bide my time. I can be patient. And so while Peter Parker is brooding over just what happened with Mysterio as well as selling his bike, we see within the midst of the crowd that we see Gwen Stacy here, and she calls out Peter Parker's name, runs up to him, gives him a big hug, and we see that these two are more in love than ever before, as we've seen in the comics here. As we see that they're going to go to the coffee bean and they're just going to catch up here. And really we just see just how both of them are truly in love with each other. And so um, it looks like the Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker have reconciled with each other. We also see here that in another location that Joe Robertson meets up with Captain Stacy here to talk about Spider-Man. And so this is pretty interesting. They're going to be um, pretty much trading secrets, trading ideas of, as to why Spider-Man does what he does. And so we see a little bit of a fan club um, forming here between Joe Robertson and Captain Stacy. But they're really doing it for professional reasons as to figure out the motives behind what Spider-Man does. So now we see a very grinning Peter Parker here. He's taking the bus back to his apartment and all of a sudden he sees Harry Osborn and he's like I guess you haven't found your father yet and so let's go to Osborn Industries and let's go to your dad's plant to see if he's there but of course the guard on duty says that he hasn't been seen for days but we see right here and lo and behold he is starting to realize that he is in fact the Green Goblin our worst fears have been recognized here as Norman Osborn is now transitioning back to the Green Goblin. 
So it looks like we'll be seeing more of the Green Goblin here and future issues here. And so we'll have to worry about that as that takes place. But let's return to the story here. We see that Peter is um, dropped off at his aunt's house. He hears her scream. He rushes in. And what was really what she was screaming about was Mysterio on TV. And he's calling out Spider-Man. He wants Spider-Man to show up at the last location that they had fought. And so Peter Parker tries to calm down Aunt May. Tells um, Anna Watson here to watch after Aunt May. He has to run off. So he swings off. He's going to now... Um, meet with Mysterio at the last location that they had fought. And so here we go. We're finally getting to the climax of the story here as Spider-Man and Mysterio are going to fight here. Um, Spider-Man tries his very best to approach Mysterio, but of course Mysterio is very cunning as, he's, as we see here, a master of illusions here. And so he's giving Spider-Man just the beating of a, his a lifetime here. I mean, Spider-Man has no chance against Mysterio. He's very confident here. And so, Spider-Man is like an amusement park. Big deal. And so, we see that um, Spider-Man is trying to play it off like this is no big deal. He also notices that gun. And so, he tries to tackle Mysterio one more time. But once again, this is another fake image of Mysterio. And so Spider-Man's trying his best to locate with his spider sense where Mysterio's at, but Mysterio is behind the gun. It clicks, and Spider-Man is blasted here. And so Spider-Man here now comes into just a big daze. He's like, whoa, man, what's going on? He's like, I feel like I'm being born and I'm dying at the same time. And all of a sudden, as Spider-Man finally comes to grips with reality, he notices that he has been transitioned to six inches that he's been shrunk spider-man has been shrunk to six inches high and now we see that he is stuck on this amusement park and that mysterio is a huge giant compared to spider-man here and so what exactly was going to happen next issue as we continue here we leave off on a cliffhanger will spider-man be able to fight against mysterio as he is now six inches tall is this truly true? Is Spider-Man six inches tall or is this just another illusion that Mysterio is using? We'll find all this out as we look at issue number 67. I hope to see you there and until next time, keep reading comics.